for all the lovers of theater, I know for sure that you are going to love this. Now, I am coming to you from the Kenya Cultural Center, where Ngugi with the Ongo's book, Gahika Deda, or if you like, I Will Marry When I Want, is being played out. Now, listen to this. This is the very first time this play is being played out in Kenya for the last 35 years years and as if that is not enough this is also the very first time it is being played out in english how beautiful is that i am ready to experience history are you let's get to it <laughs> Uh, my name is Stuart Nash, I'm the director of I'll Marry When I Want. Well, it's a play that has not been done for 35 years. Um, when it was originally done, it was shut down by the government, as everybody knows. Um, and it's, it's a real honour to do this play, and everybody's really excited about it, you know, because it's not been done for such a long time. And we're doing it in Kikuyu and English, which is, you know, a challenge for a non-Kikuyu speaker, but yeah. It's going really well, I think. I played Wageshi, that is Kigoda's wife. Um, that's the couple that, well, ends up joining the church and then things don't go so well and then they end up losing everything they had. So there was a lot of pressure to do it right, number one. Secondly, it's quite an iconic writer. The author is really iconic and the story is very important. And so there was also the pressure of making sure that the message is home. My name is Maura Bilal. I am an actor, writer and actor's minder. Artist, overall artist, yeah. Getting, getting into it took a lot of intention, took a lot of emotional openness as well. Yes, it wasn't easy, but it wasn't hard. It was as it should have been. It's been, it's been an interesting couple of uh, runs, but we're enjoying it at the end of it. It's a beautiful story. It's, it's a thought provocative piece that you need to listen to keenly to really catch what is being said without really being said, other than the obvious things that are being said. He's a very mature pharaoh. Mm. He does not complain. Mm. He does not argue back. Mm. Oh, and you never hear him asking for raised salary. Mm. No. Mm. All he asks is to devote himself at his work, praising our God all the time. Oh. It's the first time ever it's been done in English anywhere and it's the first time it's ever been done at the National Theatre. I don't know, doing a Gogi, what Diomo and Gogi were made, made a script all these years later at the Kenya Cultural Centre, being the second cast to, to put it on. Then yesterday we had the family come and then Gogi has sent us these messages. It's, it's, it's overwhelming. It's, yeah, it's one of those things that I'll know. I, right, I could quit. I could go like, ah, I don't do theatre anymore because this was amazing, yeah. Life is a stage, and if you are able to step onto a real-time theatre stage and bring forth a beautiful and deep, intense work of art, it's gratitude, it's massive, it's massive. One year, poverty has no heroes, and he who judges knows not how he will be judged. I was actually looking for a play or a musical to do, and some, somebody suggested that we do this, so I looked at it, and I thought it was brilliant and I couldn't understand why nobody's done it. Um, so we just applied for the rights, got them and we did it. No, not at all. I think they're human themes across the world. I think these things exist everywhere. They are just worldwide issues. And that, I think that's why the play has lasted so long and it will go on for decades or hundreds of years or whatever because those issues never really change. If you look at any of the really, really successful um, writers that have lasted over centuries, all of the issues that are addressed in those plays st are still relevant today as they were 300 years ago. And same with this play. I'm sure this all, people will be doing this play forever. But these women were fearless because they knew that one day this soil would be returned to us. It, it calls to mind a lot of questions. It calls to mind a lot of questions. This play was written in 1977. Uh, and the, some of the things they talk about, corruption, the gap between the poor and the rich, the, these days you're calling it the what culture? The Mubabas, the sponsor culture. We're still talking about it. 
yeah, in the play that was done in 1977. It's our society looks like we, we haven't really changed. We have more things to show, but what about here? Where are we here as a people? Where is the development? Where is the progress you know, intellectually and socially and in terms of uh, governance and leadership? We are still in the same fix that we were in over 40 years ago. That's not a good sign. That is not a good, especially now that we're heading into the elections. This is a show that everybody should really come and watch. Just to figure first themselves out and then realize what they want and what they do not want. Step. Think about the next one. Eh? This time, you are in another week. We see for you to go night shift. So you go very, very hard working. Eh? You dedicate yourself. We started at the beginning of February. So three months, just over three months. But as you know, that's relatively short for a play that we, we would normally do five or six months. Yeah, but people really turned out today and it was, I was really happy, it was brilliant, really good. With no clothes, with no heart, with nothing. Oh, my yes. brother, we are here because of what reason, my brother. Yeah. We have a harabe. Oh, yes. We want to be the church. Hallelujah. We would love to take it to Nguguaviongo in, in, in California. That that's We've spoken about that a lot, so we need to raise some funds for that. After seeing the content that these guys have just put up on stage, I feel like I'm in the present, but as part of history. And I think we've come along as a country for that to be airing, so kudos to us. They did a marvelous job. Um, I think more people should actually come and see this, definitely and not movies all the time. Revolution doesn't have to be violent. It can be, it can be on a stage. And I feel like this is really part of, of Kenya's identity. So I would like you, it would be imperative, it would be nice actually for you to come and watch uh, I Will Marry When I Want, which is Gahika Deda in Kikuyu, because it's a play that sits, has a very special part in Kenyan history, number one. Number two, it teaches us that there was more to us as Africans before the white person came and before I will say it, Christianity came. We'd ha we had our ways, we were doing well, we could have we, like, we, we could have gotten to civilization at our own time. So please come watch it, we hope it changes your minds about a couple of things, and we hope that it instills a bit more patriotism within this country. Yeah, it's really great, and obviously because it's a very Kenyan, Kenyan story, and obviously I'm not Kenyan, so I, I really worry that I've not got it right, um, but I, I think from the audience's reaction so far, it seems like We've done an, done an okay job. <laughs> Let me say a good job. Now this is where we put a cap to today's show. Thank you so much to each and every one of you who has been tuning in. As usual, we appreciate you guys a big time. Absolutely, man. Big shout out to everyone who has been tuned in. You know Mombasa, Kisumu, East Africa. You know we are the best in the East Africa. What do we say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> my name is Jack Muller, the party daddy. Oh, you can call me Papi, aka your girlfriend, go my number. And I go by the name Vivian Dago. You can simply just call me Miss V. And you know what they say if you did not see it on grapevine then it most probably never happened adios